Hello, hello, welcome back and welcome in. My name is Nikki Wheeler. If you're interested in gaming, go subscribe to my other channel and follow my Twitch to see my gaming live. Now, let's start this video. Today, I will be discussing Iggy Azalea. She is a well-known Australian rapper and singer who moved to Miami to jumpstart her career, and in 2014, she released the inescapable hit Fancy with Charlie XCX. Alongside that song was her debut record, The New Classic, released in the same year. This record obviously set Iggy up for success as she had some decent flows. Some of the tracks I noted were Change Your Life, Work, and Fuck Love. Change Your Life is a song that speaks to the idea of transformation and elevating one's lifestyle. The lyrics convey a sense of self-confidence and ambition, highlighting the desire to upgrade one's circumstances and leave behind a mundane existence. As expected, the song is sexy, confident, and daring as Azalea struts in a number of ensembles. She contrasts herself with basic bitches and presents herself as a new classic. This basically implies that she offers a fresh perspective and a higher level of quality. Iggy aims to elevate her partner's status and future, integrating her own talents and ideas into their lives. The lyrics also touch on themes of wealth and success with references to luxury brands like Louis Vuitton and Neyman Marcus. The imagery of a private island and exclusive lifestyle showcases a desire for opulence and distinction. T.I.'s verse reinforces that idea of transformation, promising to provide everything the listener needs. Personally, I did love her stylized delivery in this song because it did show her personality and you can tell she was trying to make herself known. Also, getting a feature like T.I. so early in her career was a big accomplishment as well. The second song I wanted to talk about was Work. It was a personal song about Iggy's life and how she has worked to get to where she is at currently. The song starts with Iggy describing her upbringing and the challenges that she faced growing up. She emphasizes her background where people may not understand or appreciate her achievements. This sets the stage for her to share her story. In the first verse, Iggy speaks about her early struggles, working multiple jobs and saving money to pursue her dreams. She mentions having to work diligently just to surpass her starting point and make a name for herself. She highlights the disconnect between the judgments of others who have not experienced her circumstances and the reality of her own journey. In the second verse, Iggy addresses the hurdles she encountered in the music industry after signing her first record deal. She mentions feeling betrayed and taken advantage of, but rather than letting it break her, she uses it as a motivation to prove herself and overcome adversity. She highlights the exploitative nature of some individuals who take advantage of vulnerable artists in the bridge, which leads to the third verse to pay tribute to her mother's sacrifices and support. Iggy expresses her love and gratitude for her mother's unwavering belief in her dreams. She also acknowledges the struggles they face together and promises to repay her mother someday. I think this song gave us a pretty big basis of what we needed to know about Iggy as an artist and how she could possibly develop later on down the line. She has her eye set on the prize and seems that she won't stop until she gets it. The final song I wanted to talk about on this album was Fuck Love. It conveys a powerful message of prioritizing self-love and independence over romantic relationships. The lyrics highlight the artist's desire for material success and personal fulfillment rather than seeking love from someone else. In the first verse, Iggy rejects the traditional role of a woman who stays at home and relies on a partner for support. She asserts her independence, stating that she can take care of herself and generate her own wealth. The second verse further emphasizes Iggy's focus on materialism and financial stability. She dismisses the idea of a romantic relationship and instead demands financial compensation, suggesting that her time is valuable and she should be compensated for. She acknowledges her materialistic tendencies, but believes it is justified given the society she lives in. As much as the I deserve it attitude dissatisfies me across the board, no matter who says it, the song itself was quite redeemable to me because it was catchy. It was honestly a surprise that the song didn't blow up because I did quite enjoy it. This album overall could have been better when it came to lyrics, but I can say that her delivery was a good change of pace when it came to what was around at the time, which was basically only Nicki. That would move me into the second studio album, In My Defense, which was released independently five years later in 2019. This album was a start of a new era for Iggy because, like I stated, it was an independent release and wasn't marketed nearly as much as it should have been. It did have some hits like Sally Walker and Started. On top of those songs, I also enjoyed Fuck It Up. 
Sally Walker is used as a metaphorical character, like the children's rhyme of the same name, to represent the idea of someone who takes risk and pursues the desire fearlessly. In the first verse, Lil Sally Walker is described as confident, shaking it, and making it wobble. She's unapologetic about using her assets to secure financial stability. This can be interpreted as a commentary on the empowerment of women taking control of their bodies and using their talents to support themselves. Iggy further highlights the idea that those who criticize her life may be envious because they are not in the same financial position. The second verse emphasizes her confidence and unique qualities. She boasts about her physical appearance and the attention she receives while dismissing those who talk behind her back. The references to Cupid and being a one-of-a-kind showcases her individuality and the pride she takes in standing out from the crowd. Again, I think she did really well with delivery here, and it was personalized with her twang. I don't think any rapper at this time could do what Iggy did, even if it was simplistic. I love her voice and how deep it was on this track, and just overall as well. I think also using a children's rhyme as a basis made this song all the more lovable because it's well known. But I can see the side of it being a way to not think of more intriguing flow. The next song was Started. It was basically a re-up on the track Work from her debut. Iggy uses this phrase to highlight her own ascent from a place of obscurity to a position of wealth and influence. The line I got in my bag refers to Iggy's dedication and hard work emphasizing her relentless pursuit of her goals, even if her relentlessness would inevitably be her downfall. In the first verse, she addresses someone directly, asserting her superiority over them. She dismisses the person's attempt to get her attention and comparing them to hot air. Then in the second verse, she addresses the envy and criticism she faces from other women in the industry. She questions whether they hate her because they secretly love her, indicating that her success and talent may intimidate them. She then goes on again about how she needs compensation for all the shit talk she has received, which again... I hate as a point because no, you do not need compensation. At the end of the day, if you were really confident in your rap skills, you would either ignore them or diss them directly. Either way, compensation is not needed because if it isn't physically hostile, I don't think any of it matters. Even with all of that considered, the song itself was pretty good. I liked the music and how jumpy it was, and the visual for it was also humorous and played on the common tropes of sugar daddies and such, and that would lead me into the final song in this album, Fuck It Up. Again, another song I am surprised by the lack of attention it received. I thought Cash Doll added a lot to the record and offered a new type of flow that Iggy hadn't covered yet. The verses contribute to this theme of self-assurance and assertiveness. Iggy states that she is not to be taken lightly and has a strong presence. Cash Doll's verse also focuses on her confidence and accomplishments. She mentions her dominance and success with lines like starving all these bitches the way me and Iggy ate it, which exudes a sense of superiority. This album, personally, is one of the worst. The songs I talked about were literally the only songs I liked from it, but I can say the music itself as a standalone was really good. That is something I think Iggy will always do well in. Hip hop beats are always fun, steady, and just easy to vibe with. Next, I wanted to talk about the most recent album titled The End of an Era, released in 2021. This was supposedly the last album Iggy would be releasing as she announced her retirement, but a year after it was released, she had come back out of retirement. Anyway, I thought this album was probably one of the most underrated, again because it was independently released and Iggy still doesn't have the proper marketing management, but she still managed to draw in at least one decent hit from this one. Most of this album was actually extremely good. Her flows were decent, maybe just a tad better than her debut, and the music was also quite fun and best described as club-ready hip-hop. My favorite tracks were Shut the Fuck Up, I Am the Strip Club, and Sex on the Beach. Starting with Shut the Fuck Up, I wanted to highlight this song because it was different. It is very electronic heavy and is in no way connected to the lyrics. It's weird and I don't know why I even like it, but it just scratched that part of my brain. Her actual delivery in this song was really, really good too. It was just the music that was odd. 
In the song, I Am The Strip Club, Azalea raps about living a luxurious lifestyle with expensive cars, designer clothes, and designer bags. She recognizes the allure of strip clubs and lap dancing as lucrative ways to make money and compares herself to a strip club without any need for darkness and red lights. She is unashamed of her lavish lifestyle and wants listeners to feel empowered to find any means necessary to succeed without judgment or shame. This song has no legit connection to going to strip clubs, it is more of a metaphor for the vibe of one and having the carefree attitude. It is probably one of the better songs on the album and she isn't really rapping on it, rather she is talking. But I think it kind of worked. I mean, I wouldn't mention it if I didn't think it was good. The final song was Sex on the Beach, a summery mid-tempo guitar driven track. It was probably the closest thing to what people originally loved about Iggy in the new classic era. This metaphor represents a combination of opposing sensations such as mixture of sweet and salty flavors symbolizing the intense and contrasting emotions felt during this intimate encounter. It also highlights the physical nature of their relationship. In the verses, Iggy describes the atmosphere of a lively party, specifically mentioning the Hollywood sign in a poolside setting. The lyrics illustrate the couple's carefree attitude and desire to enjoy the moment without any stress. They find joy in simple pleasures like laughing, dancing, and immersing themselves in a vibrant environment. I think it was probably one of the best songs on here where she was genuinely rapping, unlike I Am The Strip Club. I could physically hear how the song made Iggy feel and her delivery was sick. On a production level, I think this album is probably the most overproduced on certain tracks, but it makes up for it in the delivery of the words. None of the songs are overly complicated and I actually enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. Now, I wanted to move into the rankings of the albums released by Iggy. She has three total albums, two of which were independently released. This will take lyrics, music composition, vocal capabilities, and delivery into account. At number one, I have The End of an Era, number two is The New Classic, and number three is In My Defense. Azalea possesses a unique sound and certain twang to her vocals, which can be very lucrative in terms of putting in a memorable performance. Her early tracks have been catchy and stylistic. While she has found herself a lot more humbled when it comes to beefs in recent years because of the whole label situation and going independent, I think the general public consume media at a rate in which independent artists just don't fit, and that has pushed her to irrelevancy when it comes to big game rappers. She still makes hits that go pretty viral like Sally Walker or Started, which is insanely impressive. I think people have pushed her to the side because her flow isn't nearly as quote unquote good as some of the bigger rappers, but I think at this point in time, it is just a preference because I actually quite like it and I can tell it's Iggy. It isn't poor in quality, but you can tell she needed some improvement when she first started, and as time went on, she found her sound, I would like to think. She has obviously drawn inspiration from a large portion of hip-hop queens and have tried to make an amalgamation, and to some, it sounds good, some, not so much. And I think that's where I'm gonna leave this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content like this, and comment down below for what I should cover next. Until next time, bye guys.